is WSLS 10 at 6. Great being here. I get to meet a lot of new people. I get to talk to blue and gold officers. Now at 6, the proper send-off, the event that helps dozens of young people prepare for a life in the military. Plus, celebrating history, how people in the New River Valley are remembering the journey many made from slavery to freedom. But first, a van takes a dangerous turn on the interstate, leaving six people dead. Good evening, and thanks for joining us for WSLS 10 at 6. I'm Erin Brookshire. Bree has the night off. Six people are dead and 10 others are hurt after a car crash in Caroline County. It happened early this morning on Interstate 95. Virginia State Police say a van carrying 16 people ran off the road, then swerved across two lanes, hitting another car. The van flipped several times. Police say four men, one woman, and one child were all thrown from the van and were pronounced dead at the scene. The van's driver and nine other passengers were taken to the hospital with serious injuries. Police say no one in the van was wearing a seatbelt at the time of the crash. The driver of the other car was not hurt. A man is arrested after police say he assaulted someone near the University of Virginia's campus. 26-year-old Aaron Sabalo was arrested in New York and extradited back to Charlottesville. Charlottesville police say he was wanted for malicious wounding following an incident back in 2014 when police say Sabalo struck another man in the head. He's being held at the Albemarle Charlottesville Regional Jail. A lawsuit against an Albemarle County police officer is heading to federal court. Officer Andrew Holmes is accused of racial profiling in three separate lawsuits. The cases were originally filed in Albemarle County Circuit Court, but have now been transferred to federal court in Charlottesville. Each case claims Holmes racially profiled and violated people's Fourth Amendment rights, meaning protection against unreasonable search and seizure. A hearing in the case is scheduled for Monday. People in Danville are being helped by the Red Cross after their apartment caught on fire last night. It all happened around 11 o'clock at 823 Stoke Street. The Danville Fire Department says when crews arrived, they saw smoke coming from the building. No one was inside at the time. Investigators say the home has minor fire, smoke, and water damage. A nearby apartment was also damaged by smoke, but no one was hurt. The cause of that fire is still under investigation. Democrats are holding their Virginia State Convention today. Their attendees will, dis will select their delegates to the Democratic National Convention, which is in Philadelphia this summer. Governor Terry McAuliffe kicked off the event this morning with a speech in Richmond. Now after the convention is the Jefferson Jackson Dinner, where U.S. Secretary of Labor Thomas Perez is the honored guest. There are dozens of events throughout the year honoring those who have served in the military. But today a local picnic is giving young people a different opportunity, the chance to talk to graduates of the military schools like West Point. WSLS 10's Duke Carter joins us now in the studio. Now, Duke, you were at today's picnic. What is the goal for events like this? Hey, Aaron. Well, the goal of the picnic is to give young people the proper send-off if they get accepted to service academies like West Point or the Naval Academy. Now, this is the 10th year for the send-off picnic that's held at Nancy Dye's home. She says the reason she started hosting the picnic is because she has family members in the military, and she wanted to find a way to help others get ready for transitioning into military life. Very encouraging. We have just wonderful young people at our academies, very patriotic, very serious about their love of their country, and willing to be a part of something larger than themselves. So it's really an honor to get to know them over the years. Now, graduates of West Point and the Naval Academy were also at the picnic today to share their experience to potential future students. They say it's nice to come back and see the upcoming prospects. It feels unreal to have graduated. I still can't even believe it, but it feels good. I came here uh, four years ago, right before I left, so it's full circle seeing the new guys off to go in July. Now, some prospects say they want to attend these schools because it's a great segue to transition or to start serving our country. I guess I hope to be able to serve my country in the Army. Yes, sir. Uh, I would like to serve my country and uh, enjoy all the great experiences. Now, we've done some digging and learned West Point and the Naval Academy are very selective. According to the U.S. News and World Report, West Point accepts 9.5% of its applicants, while the Naval Academy takes in about 7.9%. Now, other schools in that range include Brown University and Princeton. Aaron, back to you. 
Thank you, Duke. People in the New River Valley are celebrating their history today. The community came together for the annual Juneteenth Festival in Christiansburg this afternoon. A handful of organizations, such as the Montgomery County Sheriff's Office, participated in today's event. Organizers say they want to make sure younger generations are remembering the abolition of slavery. We want people to always remember that history and to understand that um, a lot of times um, there, there have been struggles that we're not aware of. So we want to teach our youth and other adults about the history and why we celebrate it. Local lawmakers such as Christiansburg Mayor Michael Barber attended the event as well. Tonight, the William & Mary community is mourning the loss of a former president. The school confirms that Thomas Graves Jr. has died. Graves was the 23rd president of William & Mary from 1971 to 1985. The school says after leaving the university, the direct, he was the director of a museum and opera house in Delaware. Graves was 91 years old. Police in Roanoke are working to help cut down on the number of vehicle thefts. Through heat, help eliminate auto theft event. Police offered free VIN etching on vehicles today. Each vehicle has a unique VIN number used to identify the car. Police say having that number etched in multiple locations can keep a thief from stealing your vehicle. It puts uh, your VIN numbers into every single your windows so that if uh, the vehicle gets stolen, it's easier to locate. Um, it takes a lot more trouble to uh, get re replace all the windows instead of just getting rid of one VIN number. The Virginia State Police hope to partner with local police agencies for similar events in the future. Father's Day is just one day away, and the community is coming together to honor dads all across our area. Dozens of people came to Preston Park in Roanoke this afternoon for the annual Father's Day Fest. It featured fun activities such as face painting, live music, and free food. Local organizations, including TAP Fathers First, were at the event giving out helpful information to parents. Organizers say today really was all about dad. It feels awesome. Yeah, we've got a great group of partners, uh, including Freedom First Credit Union. They brought their Scoops ice cream truck. TAPS Father's First program is here. Uh, we've got um, family life and, and marriage enrichment. This is the third year for the Father's Day Festival. It aims to strengthen the relationship between children and their dads. Happy Father's Day to all the dads out there this weekend. Now, thousands of hungry people in Roanoke grabbed a bite and a brew for a good cause. The Blue Eagle Credit Union Big Lick Burger Fest took place today. It's the third year for the event, which raises money for the Council of Community Services, a local nonprofit organization. The event featured dozens of burgers, craft brews, games, and live music. Organizers say they aim to make this event more family friendly. Being that it's always falling on Father's Day weekend, you know, you think about that thing of like, don't get your dad a tie, go do something with your dad. Organizers say the event had more people in attendance than previous years, and as of 1 o'clock this afternoon, 1,100 people had already stopped by. The Virginia Museum of Transportation honors the contributions that African American community has made on the railroad. Today is the 18th annual African American Norfolk and Western Heritage Celebration. Speakers will talk about the struggles black workers went through in the industry and how crucial their role was in building the railroad. They took what they had, and which is the theme of the exhibit, cotton to silk. They took the cotton and turned it into silk for their family. So they raised their family, sent their children to college, and helped just create a better life for their, for the next generation. Now the event is free and open to the public. It kicks off in less than 30 minutes from 6.30 to 8.30 at the Virginia Museum of Transportation in Roanoke. The eight-day Chautauqua Festival continues in Withville today. It's the 32nd year of the Arts and Music Festival. Visitors enjoy live music and drama shows, balloon rides, and food from all around the country. Looks like so much fun there. It's all taking place at Elizabeth Brown Park in downtown Withville. And don't forget WSLS 10 is partnering with United Way of the Roanoke Valley for the 10 Cares Rise Up Roanoke Telethon to help homeless children and their families. It'll take place Wednesday, June 29th from 5 a.m. until 8 p.m. For information on the telethon and how you can help donate, head over to WSLS.com. Taking time to honor those who served, the community treats local veterans to a bite to eat. Plus, preparing for the worst, a local organization collects items to help those impacted by natural disasters.
Local veterans and their families in Botetourt County were invited to a complimentary breakfast this morning. The American Legion of Botetourt County hosted a pancake breakfast to honor those who have served our country. The commander tells us extra manpower is always needed to help with the many community service projects they offer each year. We hope that we'll have a big turnout. I'm hoping that we'll uh, receive a lot of recruits because a lot of the boys are returning now from Afghanistan and they're not joining and we would like to get them interested. Members tell us they always hope to attract new members as they return home from overseas. Volunteers across Southwest Virginia and North Carolina were hard at work today making sure God's pit crew members have the blessing buckets they need to respond to disasters. If you went to the grocery store today, you may have seen the volunteers asking people to buy and donate some of those needed items. The list includes things like bottled water, toothbrushes, and flashlights with extra batteries. Hopefully they'll go into Walmart and buy an item or several and bring back and we'll collect them and put them in the uh, buckets later. Or if they'd rather just make a monetary donation, we'll accept that also. All of the items will be divided into the blessing buckets that God's pit crew will give to victims of future disasters. We're excited to report fundraising for the God's Pit Crew Spirit FM WSLS 10 Rebuilding Hope House is three-fourths of the way there. We're now just $25,000 away from meeting our $100,000 goal to rebuild Nancy Harris's new house in Appomattox. Right now, Nancy doesn't have a place to call her own after February's tornado picked her home up off its foundation with her husband still inside that threw it across a field. Her husband's body was found hours later after the storm passed. Now, if you would like to donate and help us reach that $100,000 goal, log on to our website, WSLS.com, and click on the Rebuilding Hope button on the homepage. You're now taking a look at our poor mountain sky cam. As you can see, it's another beautiful day here in southwest Virginia. Coming up after the break, Alan will tell us how the rest of the weekend is looking. 521 homers. Of course, he's planning to retire at the end of this season, but uh, always good to see a uh, big poppy showing there. 521. 521. That is crazy. Imagine how excited you are on your first. By the time you hit 500, it's probably like, whatever. Exactly. <laughs> just, just a walk in the park. All right. We'll be right back. Stay with us. All right, here's something you don't see every day, a miniature pony on the loose. Police and ranchers came together to corral a pony near an interstate in Oklahoma. The outside lane of the highway was shut down so they could safely catch the animal. It took about half an hour before they were able to catch the animal and get him in a trailer. Luckily, the pony there not hurt. Could you imagine driving up the road and seeing a mini pony just cruising they up the highway? They always get loose. They, always, they, they just want to run free, you know? Yeah. Yeah. All right, well, NBC Nightly News is next. We'll see you back here tonight at 11.